What is up, everybody? It's your boy Brian from American Auto coming at you this week with the Harley. That's right. So, why don't you consider uh, sticking around till the end, see how far we can get on this thing. Now, this Harley is going to be a full build, uh, and I'm not building the engine on it, so we're going to have that shipped out. So, yeah, uh, stick around to the end so you can see how far we get. And if you hadn't already done so, how about going ahead and comment or how about going ahead and subscribing on this channel so you can see all the fun. A little teaser to, for those of you who don't know. Yep, she's coming together too. So, all right, guys, I'll bring you back in just a second. Right, so before you get started on a project like this, you definitely want to take pictures, which I've already done. You want to take pictures up close and personal with the motor. You want to take pictures of this and that and this and that. And uh, as we already know on this one, the engine is locked up. Now at this time, if you've got a bore scope of some sort, you'll want to go down and see what's inside the pistons, what's going on in there. Let me show you. So we pulled our front spark plug out. Now this thing, I can't even begin to tell you when it ran last. I have no idea. Okay, I don't know if it's ran last year or seven years ago or whatever. What I can tell you is the front plug, although dirty, is not horrible, right? Okay. But, and yes, I already broke these loose because I've been doing something off camera that y'all hadn't seen because I already know what's hiding behind here, but y'all don't. Again, oily but not horrible. But when you only have two cylinders, you don't have much room for error, right? All right, so this one is not horrible. I mean, it's got buildup on it, especially around that edge back there. That's crusty. But not the end of the world. There we go. So see, I sprayed some PB Blaster in there. That's what that is. But outside of that, it's not bad. Now, let's go to cylinder two. Need I say more? This cylinder has not moved since the bike came in here. Okay? You can see why. So that's why we are going to take this engine completely off. Plus, I need the engine off of there so I can get the frame powder coated and all that stuff. So, I'm gonna throw you guys on a tripod and I'm gonna get to work. Before you get started on a project like this, there's a couple things you wanna make definite sure you have. One is a good Sharpie. Number two is a bag or a box of bags. Number three is a box to put it all in. Because the last thing you want to do is just go blowing stuff apart on here, not knowing where everything goes, and just chucking it in a box, and whatever happens, happens. So, that's why I always get sandwich bags, a box, and a Sharpie. Then from there, you know, just take your parts off. Really all there is to it. And that way, when you go to put it back together, you know where everything is and where it all went. Okay. Okay, so here's the first thing we run into. We get the gauge cluster off of it, find out that nothing in there was hooked up. And then, that's how they had it shimmed. So, we need to take note of that as well. But, about ready to pull the gas tank off here already, I believe. Let's see. Yep. Toss that over. Well, there went one of the shims. I better catch these things. All right, gas tanks are off. There was still some fuel down in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like burnt motor oil. It smells like diesel, actually. Yeah. Anyway, so now we're going to move around to the other side. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to take this clutch assembly loose, take the coil off, and we got to work on getting the oil tank off here in a minute as well. Then we'll move to the other side and start getting the exhaust off. So, 
Let's see what we can do. All right, so we got a big pile of stuff right here. And really, guys, it's all about just taking stuff off in an order. I don't know what that order is. I'm figuring this out as I go. Because <laughs> we all know I'm an idiot. I'm too stupid to order parts. But hey, I can make this happen. Anyway, so what I did figure out is to get this big shiny oil tank from outside of there, you got to take the rear fender off. Uh, and you got to take the magneto coil off that runs your spark plugs. Now, in order to separate the engine from the trans, you have to take that trans cover off and the shifter linkage that goes to your clutch right here, which is also back here in the box. And now we've got to get the clutch off, the belt off, and then that big housing there off, and that then will separate the engine from the trans, okay? Once that happens, then I'll unbolt the trans from right there. I'll take this whole thing here off and at the bottom, wherever it's connected down there. Now, on the other side, we also went ahead and got the exhaust off, got the SNS housing off, and well, really, that's it because the rest was oil tank. We did take the Kickstarter off. It's over there in that box. But, yep. So, we just plucking right on along. Now, once I get this thing down to bare frame, guys, I'll do a whole lot more work on it uh, as far as cleanup wise. But in the meantime, I am literally at this point just trying to get the engine and trans separated so he can pick up the engine and take it to have it rebuilt. Because I am not building Harley engines. I'm not good enough for that. No. I could probably do it. I have no doubts. I mean, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. That's your whole thing behind a four-stroke engine. A Harley engine is no different. It's a four-stroke engine. It just fires a little differently. It's got a different kind of single crankshaft that makes them pistons hit kind of wonky. Anyway, uh, but on something this old, he wants to keep the original engine with the original number on it because it is the 666 block and uh that just makes this thing so much more awesome um so why not if he can get somebody to rebuild this engine and guarantee it go for it and then i'll put it back together in the time while they're rebuilding the engine and i'll probably see if he wants to have them go ahead and go through the trans make sure it's good uh while they're doing that I can get this frame powder coated and get to work on the tank and forks and all that stuff. So, anyway. That's why we're back here. But, uh, I only have a little bit longer. And, guys, you know, I, I say solely I work on classic cars. But for some reason here lately, I've been getting people coming at me with Mercury Grand Marquis and Dodge Rams. And now I've got a Kia. A guy bringing a Kia for me to look at said his wife hears a ticking noise. I hear strange noise when my wife's in the car too, but it stops when she gets out. So anyway, <laughs> all right, guys, let me figure out how to get this belt and housing and all that off. And I will bring you guys back in a minute. All right, everybody, we're back. It's the next day. I've been out here and been busy ever since I got back from taking the baby up. And yo, so I got to put that in that bag. Getting that clutch pack. The clutch pack itself was easy, okay? But getting the uh, primary off of this flange was absolutely a pain, which reminds me to show you that does not need to get lost. So, we're gonna put these two in the baggie that is labeled transmission stuff inside this box, which I put way down here under all this stuff so you've got your spring pack you've got your roller bearing pack all your springs all the bearings are in there you've got three nuts that have their springs separate little springs that have to come off as well and that big nut right there in the middle i don't know if you can see it or not i had to put it back on to the shaft which by the way is reverse threads so there's that bit of fun too did not know that yesterday found that out last night and come out here and first time i hit it with the impact boom it came right off so once you pull that in the keeper this housing will come off uh and when that comes off then you have then you have 
Uh, I already threw it down in here. That guy down there, the round guy right there, that still has to come off. And it's on there with that wedge and that keeper. So after much, much uh, PB blaster pressure, a little bit of heat, and this hammer right here, which I, I should have showed you guys that because that's one of the coolest tricks I accidentally learned. Now, I've seen people tap all around the outsides of stuff to get it loose, but I don't do that. And the reason being is because whenever you're tapping on the outside of stuff, you can break stuff without even meaning to. Like, these hammers are notorious for if you, you know, doing stuff like that. So, I put the wheel puller on there with a little flat plate over it. We were not putting pressure on the clutch shaft. See, it still works. does what it's supposed to. But, um... When you're having to get something off and you got that straight head pressure on it, after you heat it up just a little bit, get some heat into the outside to make it swell. If you'll take the ratchet off and hit straight on the end of the puller, about three good whacks, and it pops it off. That was the coolest trick I ever accidentally learned, guys. One of them. But... I watch people and they, they'll go around and they'll beat the crap out of it, beat it at an angle and all that. All you got to do is put your pressure on and hit it straight. The straight blow is what allows it to release. It's just like taking a uh, bearing out of a flywheel, you know, but or out of a crank. You know, using the bread or grease and the extension or, or you know, there's all kind of little tricks to it. Now, I need to find, because I cannot get that pipe wrench on there and i don't have a socket big enough i've got to go find me an inch and a half socket because that nut is massive now this one is regular thread okay and as you can see i've already got it soaking in pb blaster once i get that off i can get the housing off and the belt off and then i can finish pulling said engine off so let's get back to work all right, everybody. So, at this point, all we've got left to do, if I'm correct, is I gotta take this bolt here off and move this uh, bracket here that holds both cylinder heads, which I've already got the nuts off of that. And this whole thing should lift off. Then we can take this whole engine and set it out. So, uh, let's work on getting that done. Uh, right here's my five eighths. A five eighths wrench. And the other thing I love about working on old stuff like this is it's all standard. So there's that too to keep in mind. All right, slip your wrench in your back pocket, pick your flashlight back up for about the 900th time. Okay. All right. Now this is one of them times that I will put the bolt back inside the bracket. Anytime you can do that, it is highly recommended to do so. And the reason being is because you end up with all these bags and even though you got everything labeled, one random bolt is different than all the rest. So there you go. Now, which way will be the best way? Now, and I think, I know we're completely loose. Ah, uh, here we go. Maybe. Right. Right. <laughs> Come on, man. <sighs> what is holding here? That's loose. That's loose. That's loose. Now that's loose. <laughs> Holy crap! 
That joker's heavy. All right. We have our Harley V twin engine out, guys. Maybe that'll stay there. Now, let me figure out what I'm gonna do next. I'll well, bring you back. This is what I came up with. Set the old Harley engine on my Harbor Freight roller. And although it's not 100% stable, because that bottom side where that crank is, for those of you who've never been able to look at a Harley engine like that, it's right there. <laughs> but it's on there, it's off of there. And yeah, now, and I slip that kickstand back on just to be able to stand the bike up and be able to move my jack out. Now, it's time to clean all this mess up for right now. Actually, I do have to pull that transmission off and the chain off and the brakes off and everything else. But uh, we're going to hold it for right now. We're going to get this engine moved over here to the side so it can get ready to go out to the engine builder. So we'll do that. That transmission is really awesome. So other than updating some clutches and stuff like that in it, it's pretty much going to stay the same, maybe get some color on it or something. And, uh, yeah, we're going to figure out about the frame getting powder coated or painted or whatever. If it gets powder coated, you guys know exactly where I'm going to take it to, and that's going to be Carter's powder coating. Uh, outside of that, we go with plan B, which would be paint. So, yeah, we'll figure it out from there. I think powder coating would be a lot better on that, honestly. Uh, leave it in the comments below. Tell me what you think. But uh, we're going to finish stripping this frame down. And I will bring you guys back when I get it ready for whatever's next. And still haven't come up with the name, guys. Again, I'll show you this engine number. As best I can. <laughs> can't really see it. Still can't really see it. Anyway, 666HO. Hell's Harley. The Devil Shovel. Uh, Lucifer's Luxury. Uh, Morning Star spelled M O U R N I N G. I don't know. We need a name. I know it don't look like much now, but inside of two or three months, it's going to be something. Like I said, keep in mind. We got a foot clutch pedal and a suicide shifter right there. Okay. And that's all we need. We can rock and roll with it to make this thing a lot more awesomer. <laughs> so, all right, let me get some of this mess cleaned up, guys. It's driving me crazy. All right, guys. So the owner of the said Harley came today. And uh, he's a he he's a trip. He's something else. Yeah, he's something else. He's a cool guy. Uh, I think we might hang out a little bit after all this is all said and done. But anyway, he came today and picked up his uh, engine and took it to WJ's. I believe that's the name of it. Uh, to have it completely rebuilt. We've got a couple engines ahead of us, so it's going to be a little bit before that makes it back, which is all well and good. That gives me time enough to take the transmission off get all the rest of the stuff uh, snatched off the frame. And uh, yeah, we, we are looking at going with some taller risers. Uh, I've got to pull the forks off of it because we're going to have to rebuild the bearings in there. We're going to have to rebuild the brakes on it. I'm going to rebuild calipers and all that stuff and get it all ready to be painted. I think we have decided we're going to get frame powder coated. Uh, we just got to decide exactly what color we want to go with because I think we're going to be using some satin black on the uh, engine itself and on the trans. So I think on the uh, frame, we might go with maybe some burnt copper or something close to that that we can get in the powder coat, price depending, because, I mean, this is not a $100,000 Harley. Uh, although it is a one of, one of a kind with that particular number on it, but, uh, well... From my understanding, I am not a Harley expert, but from my understanding, that 666 number that's on this case is one of one. Um, that particular, you know, for, for 1970 Super Glide. Uh, and, you know, it's just 
cool having the, you know, sinister Harley or Satan's Harley or Satan's shovelhead or whatever you want to call it with a kickstart and a suicide clutch. <laughs> but anyway, we got us a game plan kind of going on now. We know what we got to do. Today has not been a very productive today, day, so we're going to plan on blasting out tomorrow for sure. Uh, so we'll end this video off tomorrow when we get the rest of this stuff stripped off of this Harley frame and get it down to bare frame and ready to go. At that point, we're going to be packing all the parts and everything down in the other building. Y'all ain't going to want to watch that. But uh, I will show you this frame once I get it stripped down to zero. Um, and that's how we're going to end out this week on the Harley build. Then we're going to get back on the OBS Chevy. So, that being said, guys, uh, yeah, I will see y'all tomorrow. Hang tight. All right, next morning we're out here back to work on this Harley. Uh, we're going to get the transmission and all this stuff taken off of this today and get it out of the way and then get back on the OBS Chevy. But I think I just found out why this Harley was parked. Okay, and I'm going to show you. So that is your control box, your brain, your your timing, your everything, right? And that little plug right there plugs into the front of the engine block, right? Well, wait a minute. Nope, I'm wrong. Scratch this whole cut. After further inspection, <laughs> I about let my mouth say something that it was going to regret. Uh, I don't know why this bike was parked yet, unless it was an oil consumption problem because, you know, the, the rear pipe and rear jug and all that was a major problem on these Harleys anyway, uh, consuming a ton of oil, right? Well, on this one, the rear jug was absolutely rusted in the cylinder bore. That's why the engine was locked up. Now, the transmission seems to operate properly, so that's a good thing. Um, but that being said, that's really the only thing I can see because the carburetor on that was a S and S uh, carburetor and intake and everything on there just worked and you know nothing was froze up so it has to be something and it very well still could be something in this janky wiring on this bike there's all kind of like switch there's a switch on it and there's all kind of just not adequately adequately sized wires run all over the frame so we're going to take all that off too uh i'll end up building a new wiring harness for it anyhow uh to be able to run the headlight tail light and so on and so forth but as it stands right now guys we just gotta get the transmission taken off of here and get the frame stripped down so there we are right at the moment and uh i would put you on a time lapse to watch this but it's gonna take a little bit of time and i do all this off my phone so i can't listen to ben shapiro while i'm taking the bike apart if i have y'all on a time lapse so, I will update you in a few minutes. Hang right, tight. guys, been busy at it. We uh, got the rest of the frame stripped down. Now it's time for the forks. So, we got to undo them four uh, bolts right there, get the handlebars off, take these risers off, which I could possibly, well, we got to change the risers anyway. And then once we get that off, then I start pulling the guts out so I can pull the whole front forks off of it. So, uh, and front tire off of it. I might leave the front tire on for a while. I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll figure it out as I go, you know, just to get this thing apart. But, yep, we're getting one step closer. Getting just a little bit closer. All we got left now is to pull them forks off of here. And then the frame is red eye for this next spot. You can see all my Rock Auto boxes. That's for another job coming in that I'll show you guys. Uh, coming in, I think, on the 25th of this month. But uh, as of right now, you know what we're working on. Anyway, so I've got a get these forks off of here and figure out how that works. And then goo 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 choo, dude. We're gonna rock this joker back. I wanna show you something I thought was really, really, really funny. This is a 1970 Harley Super Glide. And then, what do you see right there? Japan. Oh my Lord. It's been Japan parts since I don't know how long. <laughs> anyway.
I guess that's just because it's the shocks. I'm not real sure. Maybe somebody done some work on it. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, guys, let's get these forks off, and I'll bring you back in just All a minute. All right, so we got the forks off. And I will show you the reasoning behind this is because one, look at all this rust piled up on here on both of these forks. But main thing, look at the uh, pivotal shaft right there. See how much rust is on that? And look at the bottom bearing. That is grungy. But then look inside here too, you got the same thing in there. So that's why we had to take this completely apart as well. So that being said, it's apart. It's time to break out the super clean. So let's get after it. All right, it. everybody. It's been a busy, busy, busy day to hear, here today at the American Auto Compound. And, uh, yeah, we've had two projects going on at one time and trying to get quite a bit knocked out. And I think we're doing pretty good. I've had Josh working on the uh, truck today. so uh, But the truck ain't about this video. So let me show you what I've done today. I don't know if you can recognize that or not, but that is the sinister harley i mean it looks a little bit it something just is different about it i don't i'm not quite sure what it is not not real sure it just looks a little i don't know lighter like i mean just a guess here but you can pick it up with one hand now <laughs> we got it stripped all the way down guys i'm gonna let it soak in some uh super clean get all that oil and grease off of it down there and just gonna spray the whole entire thing down but that's that that is that so because the engine is out at the engine builder and because right now all i can do is clean this and get it ready for paint and everything or powder coat depending on which one we're gonna do my hood's dented on my cadillac more than when the deer hit it uh but we're just gonna start prepping this frame and getting it ready we're not doing any cutting and fabbing on it but what we are going to do is make it look absolutely amazing um with paint and powder coat and anything else we can think of um but that being said guys that's going to do it for this week's video on the sinister harley uh like i said there's not a whole lot I can do right this second on it. And I'm kind of working two videos at one time. So that's going to be it on this one. It's disassembled. It's ready for all the magic to happen. So let's get the magic happening and uh, see where this thing goes. Anyway, so I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody who's commented on it and all this. And uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe on the videos, guys. Give me some input. Tell me what you want to see. I mean, we make it all happen. I'm not I'm not against ideas coming from you guys. Uh, Lord knows I have absolutely learned a ton from you guys in the past already. So, you know, I, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to be able to do this kind of stuff. Uh, yes, I work on cars from home, but I also do YouTube full time. So, anybody and... If y'all know anything about YouTube, you know 1,070 subscribers ain't making no money. Uh, and watch time hours ain't making no money. So, tell your friends. Get everybody to help watch, guys. Let's build this channel. I want to show y'all everything I can do. You know, plan it out for the next year. Maybe this, maybe, maybe this coming year, we can take that, that right there to Hot Rod Power Tour. That's that'd be a goal and maybe just maybe we can put it in the fire tech booth let's see what happens anyway guys that's gonna do it for this one thanks for watching and comment like subscribe and all that stuff all right we'll see you guys on the next one peace out